we doing, guys? Good. How about Bacious and feeling today? Ready to get after it, man. Ready to get after it. Buffalo, cold, playoff game. Not getting any better, baby. You guys have been a pretty good road team over the years. Something you can put your finger on why you guys have been so efficient. I think, I think uh, from the top down, Coach Reed does a great job of challenging everybody in the building. You know, it's not easy to go anywhere and uh, get a win in the NFL, let alone in the playoffs. And uh, with that being said, you know, it's a, it's a challenge that has to be met during the week. And um, Coach Reed does a great job of kind of getting everything organized in that regard. How does he do that? Like, how does he challenge you guys? Um, starts with team meetings, setting the tempo and, uh, and how we're going to attack him and just the mind frame and just the mindset that we got to have throughout the week to, to get some good work in. There aren't many guys on this team that have played road playoff games. You've done it before. Um, you got any message for the guys who have just been here at Arrowhead playing these games? I think the biggest thing is just the, in, instead of it being on the road game, because everybody's played on the road, um, I think that it's more so in the playoffs, just we take it up a notch from the wild card, we, the wild card weekend last weekend. Um, the playoffs are just, everything just kind of, it, it, it speeds up as you go along in the playoffs. And that's, I think is more important uh, to stay focused, understand your assignments a little bit more uh, so you can go out there and play as fast as you possibly can. There's been uh, a lot more snow still in Buffalo, so the stands are going to have snow. There were snowballs kind of getting thrown during some of the plays when they were playing the Seahawks last week. It's a hostile environment, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I mean, you got to just coach. It's Bill's game. Mafia, man. That's, yeah. that's why it's, that's their home field advantage. That's why it's, uh, I'm sure the guys love playing for that fan base. Um, you know, I, I grew up in Cleveland, man. We were throwing beer bottles at people, so. <laughs> they, uh, Coach Reed said, keep your helmet on, right? You don't want to get hit in the head with a snowball. But it, it, it seemed like when he got down to the end zone, that's when he saw some snowballs, kind of like maybe when a, someone's throwing a pass to someone in the end zone. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm watching the same stuff you're watching. I don't, I don't think there's any way to stop it. I just think, you know, you got to play in the conditions that you're playing. Trev, uh, we've seen JT's emotion, you know, the past week or, or so, and I know he's not made any decision yet. But how much are your thoughts with him and, and – communicating with him and his process right now? Um, yeah, it, uh, it came out that he retired, and he, he didn't really say any of that. So it's just uh, the end of that game, I think everybody kind of felt for him, uh, knowing that, uh, that he has been thinking about it a lot over the past couple of years. The documentary shows that. You don't need to go around and ask anybody. So it's, uh, I don't know, it's just um, it's been cool to see everybody appreciate who he's been over the years uh, this past week. But um, I think the big guy's still got some football left if he wants it. Travis, what impressed you most about Rasheed's first ever playoff performance last week? I mean, obviously, I was proud of him. I think uh, he's come a long way, and I think he's still ascending as a, as a player in this offense. And, um, you know, it's just been fun to see him rise to the occasion uh, and, uh, and really just um, catapult us in a, in, a lot of, in a lot of ways, uh, both in the pass game and run game. And it's just been, uh, it's been awesome to see him accept the challenges every single week of – um, we tend to through 15 and kind of as a rookie, you kind of get lost a little bit. And he's been real focused uh, throughout that and uh, really hasn't really hit a rookie wall uh, as much as um, at least I did, for sure. Were, were there things you saw about him way back when, like maybe in training camp, that let you know he oh, was yeah. going to be able to come along? What, what were those things? Um, I would say just his, his attention to detail, his ability to kind of feel out uh, defenses, see, see – be confident in what he's seeing in the defense to be able to find voids. Um, I think he's been uh, he's been pretty spot on with that, and 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 open to learning more about that kind of stuff. And uh, obviously, when you're open to learning about stuff in uh, in this building, you're going to figure it out. I say, what kind of things does he come to you with? He comes to you with questions and for advice from time to time. I think nonstop. I just kind of developed a a relationship with uh, with everybody on the team to talk through what we what we're going through out there on the field. Um, knowing that I've been in Coach Reed's offense for forever, I kind of understand how he wants it ran, how Pat likes some things ran. Uh, and then on top of that, just uh, feeling comfortable in what you're seeing and, and kind of the, uh, the rules and the leverages that the defense has. Uh, sometimes you just need a little reassurance. You talked about that as far as, you know, the options on routes and, and learning that and everything, and he's starting to kind of get a feel for it. How long did it take you to get a feel for, you know, how your freelancing abilities? It took me about... I'd probably say five to six years to feel comfortable. Uh, Coach Reed trust me uh, with some of the stuff I was doing, but it all it all happens in practice first, and you either get told don't ever do it again, or you know, go, you know that wasn't bad. You know, it's 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 either one or the other, and then you keep you just kind of learn as it as you go. And um, with that being said, the offense is at this point um, 
a lot more uh, of a feel than it was when I when we first started. And I mean, that's only helped out Pat a tremendous amount. For the last two, Sam and then Nate, go Sam. Travis, you made the decision to sit out in week 18. Did you notice the effects of that during the last week? I noticed uh, throughout the week, I, I got to get a lot of good work in. Um, you know, sometimes after after a big game, you just take a few hits. Um, body just doesn't it doesn't get back to, to tip top shape until the towards the end of the week and you get to play again. Um, that week, I got to get uh, some really good reps in early on, and um, I think that kind of helped me out even this week uh, coming into this game. Nate, Travis, you've been through this before, but when you face a team in a rematch, sort of opportunity in the postseason, what of those experiences have you sort of learned about? what you can do in a rematch versus obviously what the team just presents to you the first time. Yeah, you got to play fast. That's the biggest thing. You got to play fast. You got to challenge the rules. Um, they've seen things. They, they're they're going to be accustomed to a few things, uh, especially with how many times we've played them, let alone in the playoffs, just as many times we've played them over the past four or five years. And um, yeah, you just got to play fast, understand uh, the job that needs to get done and uh, make contested catches is going to be huge because they're going to have an idea of where we're going. and. Um, you know, you might have a guy on your hip, and we're going to need you to make a big play in those kind of moments. And um, those are the challenges we like to accept for sure. Thanks, Travis. Thank you. Thank you, Travis. Stay warm, guys.